Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Almighty God, we know that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. So this evening we give you thanks that we know where our hope lies, that in death you, your greatest love has been shown to us because you have laid your life down so that it would have no dominion over us. Tonight, Father, we begin a season of mournful repentance for our sins, and yet we do so knowing of your grace and of the hope that is in you. So, Father, we gather tonight with those who do know hope, and that hope is fixed and sure in you. Father, we ask tonight that every word of my mouth and every meditation of every heart in this place would be acceptable in your sight. For we depend upon you as our only rock and our only redeemer. Amen. So Lent begins today with this somber service of repentance. And it is easy for us to focus only on the sorrow that this day contains. This week I looked back over the ten or so sermons that I've preached on Ash Wednesdays over the year, and they all contain some comment about this being one of the most brutally sad days of the church year. For today is indeed a day that we acknowledge and mourn our sins when we mark our foreheads with ashes when we recall that we are made from the dirt and to the dirt we are doomed to return. Today is a solemn day for it begins the solemnity of Lent, 40 days of fasting and penitence, of introspection and reflection as we seek to prepare our hearts and our minds for the sorrows of Holy Week so that we are fully ready to experience the joy of Easter. But all week long, I keep being drawn back to the idea of joy, that tonight, on Ash Wednesday, we are people who are called to find joy in these ashes. For here is joy. Because of Ash Wednesday, I actually know who I am. You actually know who you are. We are, you and I, creatures of God's making. We are beloved of God, and yet we are dying. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The leading cause of death is birth. Born as we are into a broken and sinful world, death is on all of our horizons, barring the return of Jesus during our earthly lives. Some of us are closer than others, but I think that I will mark toddlers and infants and children with ashes today. They are no less marked to return to the dust than I am or than you are. But again, there is joy in this, for if we know the truth of our lives and we don't do what our culture does so effectively and deny the reality of death, then we can act. Or rather, we can respond to the great action of God on our behalf. We can throw ourselves at the mercy of the God who has promised and is faithful to ultimately heal all of our diseases who has borne all of our sorrows, who has promised to turn all of our tears into dancing, who has promised to anoint us with the oil of gladness instead of our weeping. Ash Wednesday is a day full of truth, truth greater than any truth that the world is trying to sell you. You are dust. But can you be something other than dust? That question receives its great answer at the end of these 40 days of penitence. You who are dust, I who am dust, we are raised with Christ and in Christ if we will only repent 
and turn our lives over to the one who made us and who has given his life for you and for me. So this evening, we are going to take these ashes seriously. We are going to weep for our sins. We're going to rail against the death that stalks us all. But we are going to do so with joy. We sung a song as we came in tonight. Jesus Christ is interceding for you even now at the Father's right hand. Jesus Christ was sent to heal you when you are contrite. Jesus Christ came to call not the perfect, not the already redeemed, not the sinless, but to call sinners. Are you here tonight and in need of intercession? I am. Are you here this evening and contrite? Oh Lord, I want my heart to be contrite. Are you here tonight and are a sinner? I am. This is a day for you and for me who admit the truth about ourselves. Our collect of the day, which we say together on this night, tells the truth. We are indeed wretched sinners, and yet God offers us mercy and perfect remission and forgiveness if we will only repent and turn around, stop running towards our own desire, stop running toward our own desire to sin, and to come into his arms of mercy and grace and holiness and love. Isaiah gives us a good litmus test to see if our repentance is genuine. Do we moan and fast and put on ashes so that God will do stuff for us? Or are we those who have truly been transformed into people after God's own heart? If you're here this evening and you're still seeking for a Lenten fast or discipline... You could not do much better than to begin tonight heeding Isaiah's words. Repent of your sins. Repent of your belief that you can do better than what God has called you to. Turn away from your tendency to serve yourself and ask God to plant in your heart an urgency to love the world that he loved enough to die for. Ask the Lord to plant in your heart an urgency to love the world the way that He loves the world, to serve others in the name of the God who washes feet and who lays down His life. Give freely to the poor. Go mentor a little boy at Valiant Cross Academy. Go become a foster parent. Go change the diaper of a prisoner's child at Adelham House. We do things like that. Because God says that that is when the true light that lightens the world begins to dawn in our hearts. That is when we begin to show forth to the world that we are not doing what we want to do, but rather we're doing what God has called us to do. Both Paul and Christ beckon us to hear that in obedience and in contrition and in repentance, There's joy hidden among these ashes. Christ is calling to you tonight. He's calling to me tonight to take our death seriously. To take these ashes on our foreheads and remember who we are. I am dying. You are dying. But for you, Christ took death upon himself. For you, Christ became ashes. He became sin so that you might be reconciled to God. Take your Christian life seriously. Paul reminds us that today is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Now, a life spent in repentance and being led by the Lord rather than our own disobedient hearts, they're going to be full of challenges, affliction, hardship, beatings. But all along, 
we will know who we are. We're the ones who are dying and yet live. We're the ones who are sorrowful and yet rejoicing. We're the ones who are told lies by the world and yet we know the truth. And it is that even while we are dust and to dust we shall return, Jesus has a reward for us, held fast in his right hand, treasures for us when we are with him that are far beyond anything that this passing world has to offer. You are dust, and so repent and turn to the Lord, and he will bring you through these 40 days of sorrow into the joy of his resurrection glory. Amen.